Hi, and welcome to the Transpec Industry Limited Business Update Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Bimal Mehta, Managing Director of Transpec Industry Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening to all participants. Uh, I extend a warm welcome on behalf of Transpec Industry Limited to everyone joining us for our business call today. I am accompanied by our Joint Managing Director Sri Avtar Singh, CA for Mr. Pratik Shah, our Company Secretary Mr. Alak Vyas and SGA team, our Investor Relations Advisors. I will provide a brief overview of recent developments. Post that we will open the floor for questions and answers. Just to reiterate, just to reiterate, given the nature of our business model, we have consistently emphasized that in our earlier interactions that our company's performance should ideally be assessed more on an annual basis and not on a quarterly uh, basis. The fiscal year 2024 presented notable challenges across the chemical industry value chain. This was primarily stemmed by widespread global destocking, slow demand from end-user industries, and uncertain pricing scenario due to excess supply of select products, and full opening up of supplies from China, and that too at a very low price in most products. The overall business performance of Indian chemical manufacturers had been subdued for the financial year 24, and we were not immune to it. I would like to emphasize that company to a certain extent withstood the headwinds in this challenging business environment due to stable business and customer trust. And we have also followed prudence in not deploying capital on capacity expansion without having clear demand visibility. With a six decades of presence in chemical industry, Transpec Industry Limited is a prominent supplier of chlorinated products serving diverse industry including plastic, polymers, pharmaceuticals, agrochemicals, dyes, pigments, photo initiators, etc., organic peroxide, etc. We are delighted to say that all our products are developed in-house at Transpec. Additionally, we have strong collaboration with esteemed universities and sci scientists in the surrounding area for new product or chemistry work. Over the past few years, our company has focused on developing more value-added, stable, and scalable products. As part of this strategic plan, we developed multiple new products and dispatched samples in financial year 2024. However, further validation and scalability of these products will depend on customer mandates, and we will deploy capital prudently to support these efforts. Uh, coming to some brownfield work that we did, the plant that replaced an old plant has already been commissioned and has started production. The products from this plant are currently in low demand, so it is not operating at full capacity, but plant is ready and uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's giving the product that is required. At the same time, we have identified some potential from pharma chemical market in various regions such as Africa, Middle East, South America, and Eurasia. Our objective is to expand a diverse range of products with more valued and high margin products. In the next three, four years, we target nearly 30-35% business will be derived from high margin products. We recently started business with customers in Eurasia and South America. We have also started supplying uh, products, products to United States uh, customers. All these strategic transition positions us for sustained growth and success within the evolving market landscape. As mentioned, business performance for financial, to 20, financial year 24 has been shocked due to global, gradual pickup from clients amid uncertain demand and lower volumes in domestic market. 
Demand across the end industries have remained subdued both in domestic and global markets. The ongoing challenges in Middle East and Europe have further impacted the demand. With over 85% of our total business coming from the export market, freight and logistic costs have increased to some extent in second half due to Red Sea crisis. However, a large part of our freight cost uh, is paid by customers, so that is also something that has cushioned to some extent this uh, increase in uh, freight cost. Overall, lead time has also been impacted because the uh, inbound and outbound shipments have to take a different route than the Red Sea. Our production strategy is closely attuned to current market demands. So in medium to long term, the demand for key assets and alkyl chloride are anticipated to remain stable and based on recent engagement and uh, clients, uh, engagement with our customers and clients, we are expecting a modest revival in second half of financial year 2025. Now coming to one uh, major uh, subject that many of you have been uh, requesting for listing on NSE. So we, as you may be aware, we had already initiated the process of listing our company shares on uh, National Stock Exchange. And the process uh, has already been going on, but there are a lot of, uh, there's a huge amount of documents and including the information that was required from uh, 1970s and 1980s. So all this information has consumed a lot of time and now uh, we are almost ready with our application. Our advisors are examining this, uh, detail, this, this information and uh, data in detail and once it is done we, we will we will be applying to nsc very shortly coming to the financial performance of financial fy 2024 uh, total revenue for fy 24 stood at 60.604.8 crores ebitda for the year stood at uh, 107.5 crores EBITDA margins for the full year came in at about 17.8% or so roughly about 18%. Profit after tax for the year came in at rupees 38.6 crores and board has recommended a dividend of rupees 14, which is 140% per equity share of this value of rupees 10 for the financial year 24. With this, I conclude the speech and now we open the for the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use answers while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nirav Chimodia from Anvil Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Thanks for the opportunity uh, and good afternoon to the entire team of Transfer. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, sir, I have two, three questions. So one, uh, if we see this uh, financial year FI24, I think our revenue degrowth is close to 28-29%. Mm. So if you can just uh, walk us through in terms of how much was the volume degrowth in FI24 or were there, was there any price-led uh, degrowth also which has led to this 28-29% uh, fall in our revenue? Okay, so there are, uh, I mean, both both are correct. Uh, one is, uh, there is definitely a volume uh, in terms of quantity, I mean, volume degrowth, uh, especially in, uh, in uh, some of our polymer uh, application. And on the other hand, uh, price uh, also has reduced. Now, price has reduced not only because of the market dynamics, that also is there, but it is not very significant. But more importantly, uh, as you might be aware, FY23, raw material prices had shot up. Correct. So this is back-to-back -back effect. So raw material prices shot up, so naturally our prices went up. Now raw material prices have largely 
come to you know reasonable level and that affected our uh, our sell price also so both both here the reduction has happened correct because sir, if we see our uh, polymer division sales i think it has grown de grown by close to 21% so i yes. presume that yes yeah so i presume that out of 28 29% de growth what we have seen 21% is predominantly coming from the polymer division and that too in terms of the lower offtake from the customer so yes largely the volume yes yes yeah so safe to assume that let's say 24 25% of this de growth is contributed by the volumes and rest by the prices 25 to 20, 24 to 25% of this de growth is uh, no maybe little more little more by volume little okay. more by volume so, so almost all the degrowth is predominantly from the uh, from the volumes only if we if we take it in that way yeah but but there has been uh, impact to price there has i mean the raw material cost there has been impact i don't have the exact number no but, uh, but yes but, uh, but, but there has been impact of raw material as uh, for example a uh, couple of our uh, raw material went down by almost 30 35% than what it was in fy23 correct 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 uh, uh sir based on your uh, customer interaction you mentioned one of the point in the opening remarks that we expect some modest recovery from h2 yes so let's say fy23 was the best year for us in terms of the volumes from mm-hmm. almost all the product type segment predominantly the polymer side yes so yes. so can we see those volumes fully recovered in h2 like what degrown we have seen in fy23 is it is it safe to believe that uh, most of those volume degrown could be recovered in h2 or those recovery could be extended in uh, fy26 based on your customer interaction yes yeah, yeah. so so we we do not expect full recovery in h2 okay. uh, we we expect probably about uh, 30 40 40% maybe around uh, recovery in h2 and the balance will spill over to the next year uh, see the 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 the, the uh, one another answer to this question i mean more little more generalized based on the customer interaction is that overall market uh, structure is not uh, significantly change, changed correct it is purely the the cautious approach that everybody is taking because of the significant uncertainty and so nobody is ready to build inventories nobody is ready to have you know significant wall uh, quantities in in the value chain uh, many people are looking at uh, kind of back to back ordering those kind of things are there so because as you know post covid everybody suffered due to very very heavy or high inventory so people people are you know i mean companies are a little bit cautious in terms of uh, piling up inventory so gradually they are also cautious and naturally therefore the ordering to uh, suppliers like us is also very uh, conservative or very cautious but structurally market is not uh, uh, affected in that sense that there is a for example there is some alternative or there is some other product or the demand for this product is not going to be there in fact new and new application areas are also being developed uh, so longer term uh, we see revival and besides uh, that we are also we'll talk about that later on but Uh, some new products we are working on which is non polymer uh, can provide some good growth all that work is going on sir so the two questions here in terms of our current discussion so one is uh, let's say the newer products what we have launched over last 2 3 years uh, how much they have contributed in fy24 and is there a possibility that uh, some portion of our uh revenue degrowth which has happened in fy24 plus the recovery is what we are expecting like 30 40% in h2 uh what sort of uh, what sort of uh, contribution could further be coming from this new product so that the impact of this revenue fall could be minimized 
See, the issue is that uh, the question is not about uh, products. For example, we introduced about, uh, I think, three or four uh, acid uh, chlorides into our, uh, our uh, portfolio. Yeah. And uh, most of them have good uh, potential. But currently, as I mentioned, you know, the conservatism that is uh, apparent or very clear, ordering process is slow, very slow. And, uh, so see, I, I just give you an example that we started, uh, I mentioned in my speech that we started supplying some new acid chlorides, not those which we were traditionally supplying okay. to a couple of customers in uh, US. Yeah. Uh, same way we started supplying uh, some acid chlorides which we never supplied to Korean market we have started supplying. And these are all good potentials. When I say good potential, these are like uh, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 metric ton a year kind of potential. Right. But, but, uh, but uh, it, is, it is going to take some time before we really, really see some major traction out of this. But, uh, you know, we have begun, we have started and uh, that helped us uh, expand our uh, list of customers, list of regions. And uh, and and build that potential uh, that we we can capture uh, you know uh, uh, in the in the in the coming period. Yeah. So this list of products what you mentioned, sir. Maybe the question. My, this is just this is just a continuation of my question. On I'll join back once this is over. So sir, just to just to continue with, let's say these three to four products or five products what we have launched. Uh, is this a potential to uh, have a turnover of let's say? 150 to 200 crores over next two three years based on the kind of geography penetration or the customer diversification which we have entered into maybe maybe around 80 80 200 crores maybe yes correct correct got it sir thank you so much sir i'll join back in the queue and wishing you all the best thank you thank you, thank you. the next question is from the line of pratik kotari from unique pms please go ahead Yes, hi. Good afternoon, uh, and thank Good you. afternoon. Yes. Uh, so, this, uh, in continuation to your last response, this 800 crores potential, this would be per molecule that you would be looking at, right? No, Not no, 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 no. That would, uh, if per molecule would have been there, then it's, uh, it's, uh, I would be very, it's, it's in total, roughly in total. But longer term, maybe uh, this can go to 150, 170, but longer term. Right now, I cannot tell how much time. But uh, what the, the visibility that we have today is that once this business is pick up, uh, we should be seeing around 80 uh, crore, 100 crore uh, volume. Correct. And these are, I believe, the acid chlorides which we have uh, launched. Uh, yeah, yeah. There are also non-acid chlorides which we had. Uh, uh, Just one moment. Uh, Ah, sorry, please. Yes, sir. Uh, so I believe this is the acid chlorides which we have launched. We were also planning or we had already launched a few non-acid chlorides also. Uh, yeah. You can talk a bit no, about that. Non-acid chlorides, about uh, three or four products uh, are almost uh, kind of uh, on the verge of final validation. Customers are trying to uh, work on uh, the samples that we have supplied. And once the testing is done, they are now validating. So validating means uh, they are basically keeping it uh, on the shelf, some part of it, and some part of it, they are making their own product, checking their product, and again, keeping them those products on shelf to see how everything performs. Once uh, that shelf life is over, uh, whatever, I mean, shelf period is over, then they will go for performance testing for their end product that how it performs in whatever application they are uh, going to use and once that performance testing is uh, kind of successful then we will be able to start uh, commercial supply on a ramp up uh, based on a ramp up plan so initially very small quantity and then uh, it will go up and all that so uh, uh, yes, product development that we have been talking about uh, has been now uh, uh, quite, uh, you know, uh, in pipeline and uh, products are 
when you said developed so at our laboratory level at our kilo lab level uh, to some extent pilot pilot level they have been developed and the potential here would again be similar maybe 3 5 years out uh, sorry the the potential for this non acid chlorides would would be similar 3 5 years out this 80 150 which we intend to do even more even more and more yes correct correct uh uh and then like given the current uh, scenario situation i mean uh, we were thinking of putting up a new plant maybe getting a some uh, long term contract in place or maybe for this new product uh, uh, obviously last year was very challenging uh, and possibly so next year too so how are we thinking currently in terms of new capacity and this is in the context that for a greenfield chemical plant it easily takes 2 3 years to put up so Uh, where are we in that stage how are we thinking about it so basically see today when we talk about investment and when you talk about something uh, you are setting up something new you are talking we are talking of significant investment so so uh, i mean as you might be aware many companies went on aggressively into uh, adding capacities or uh, setting up projects and plants and then uh, uh, huge struggle they are going through or they have gone through so we we have taken little more prudent approach and uh, we are just uh, as i mentioned uh, some of these three four products may need some uh, some additional manufacturing facility whether it can be uh, Uh, an existing facility or it can be a new plant that we are uh, we are um, kind of uh, examining but more importantly uh, how the customer is coming forward in terms of the demand visibility and once this validation is done uh, or during that uh, period that would actually define uh, how we are going to you know move further on this so we are we are looking at options where we can uh, do something uh, you know we, we we look at some small facility and take over or we can do some arrangement which we already have like job work and all that or we can uh, look at also greenfield uh, facility but as of now immediately speaking greenfield may be not very very high on our uh, our uh, consideration it is under consideration but not very high on our side probably an a facility which has some uh, some uh, possibility to just um, modify and uh, then start production uh, those kind of options we are looking at so with little limited or lower investment uh, we can take um, less risk we will take less risk and then we can still capture whatever opportunities that we have and once like you mentioned about long term contract so uh, typically we are always in dialogue with various customers for long term contracts also uh some of the customers uh, uh, i mean some big companies are still in favor of long term contracts but a big number of customers as i mentioned are playing very very conservative across chemical industry not only transfix customers but across chemical industry and nobody is very keen i mean there are few exceptions but generally nobody is very keen to to enter into something which will commit themselves for a very long time they are just waiting and watching to see how how this uh, uncertain situation unfolds but we are in dialogue with couple of customers for uh, some sort of contract like that but of course don't expect that that is going to be the same level or same type of contract that we have seen earlier but at least it will provide a stable and consistent uh, business of whatever size uh, uh, that would be available right fair enough and, and so given the total capacity we have placed given the current pricing Um, our peak revenue from the current capacity we can do would be about 800 crores more than that about uh, close to about 900 okay. sure thank you and all the best sir and it depend on price but about 9 no, correct 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 no, thank you and all the best sir and hope we continue this concord thank you yes thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ankit gupta from bamboo capital please go ahead yeah uh thanks for the opportunity and uh, uh, you know uh, my question is sir on the new 
thoda development and you know uh, uh, mr gupta before you go ahead with the question maybe request that you use your handset for optimum audio quality please thank you yeah i am on handset only is it better now yes sir it's better now please go ahead sure so sir my question is more on the product development and new product introduction over the past uh, few years that we have seen you know fy 18 we were around 350 360 crore kind of revenue fy and then we uh, we got the in the long term contract uh, with our customer and our you know revenue scaled up to 600 crore but post that you know we did the challenges because of covid and all but you know in, in fy 22 and fy 24 our top line has been around 600 crores and fy 23 we did see a growth but that was primarily driven by prices of uh, raw materials spiking up leading to increase in you know uh, our uh, our products so you know sir in the in terms of you know new product introduction over the past 4 5 years uh, except for the the, the long term contract that we have how has been the uh, you know new product performance in terms of our revenue contribution let's say you know the products how many products did we develop over the past 3 4 years and how has been their contribution to the revenue okay. just to correct one thing that uh, the 600 to 800 crore jump uh, in fy 22 and all uh, mm-hmm. it was not uh, driven only by uh, raw material price it was also there was also a significant quantity jump uh, especially okay. as we discussed earlier with another uh, uh, shareholder uh mm-hmm. that uh, uh, especially of the polymer business the the volume coming from the polymer business so that is one okay. now uh, last 3 uh, 4 years we have introduced about 5 or 6 acid chlorides mm-hmm. and uh, if we ca- if we talk about fy 24 for example yes uh, then we we did the business of uh, some of these new products uh and that's why you are seeing about 600 plus crore uh, volume mm-hmm. otherwise it would have been somewhere in the range of 570 or uh, 5575 or so so there has been contribution of about 25 30 crores uh, coming from some of these new products but uh, each i mean the products are introduced in a gradual manner so over 3 4 years say for example one product was introduced this year only one product was introduced or maybe two products were introduced last year and some of these products as i mentioned are under undergoing validation at this point in time mm-hmm. uh, i have explained also in past uh, in my uh, earlier calls that uh, the process of commercialization sometimes takes 2 and 1/2 to 3 years Uh, because uh, most of our products go in very critical application for example uh, making a, making a medicine pharmaceutical so then they never take chance with that or this polymer most the polymer that is made from what the product that we supply these are mission critical applications like defense and like fire fighting and aircraft manufacturing and uh, high end vehicle manufacturing uh, those kind of things so so validation is a very very long long process uh, and uh, and uh, overall uh, i can say today that we have now come to a stage where we have many products as i mentioned in the earlier uh, uh, i'm response to earlier question we have many products which are at the last uh, you know stages of uh, either approval or validation so in next two years what i feel is that what i what we believe is that uh you will see many products getting commercialized and then gradual uh, pick up of volumes okay so the 70 crore of uh, revenue contribution from this new molecule you are expecting in fy 25 it is uh h2 and uh, coming i mean annually annually you can consider sure. from next year but h2 will see some of the some of the revenue from that okay and sir when the polymer business stabilizes you know our base revenue should go back to let's say at least 700 750 crore or uh, you know close to about 800 800 crore okay 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 and then, you know one thing on the the capex or that you told that you know you are not too keen on doing greenfield capex so uh, given the regulatory challenges that we have at our existing ekalbara site 
does it mean that you know our major uh, expansion or uh, major growth will come from you know uh, job work to our associate com- to our group companies or uh, you know uh, let's say if you have to drive our revenues from let's say 700 800 crore, crore revenue from uh, when our existing business bounces back plus you know 80 80 to 150 crore kind of revenue from our new products over the next 2 3 years so let's say if you have to go beyond 900000 crore of revenue uh, what like we'll have to do more job work will that be uh, the major growth uh, major source of capacity enhancement or uh, we are very keen on looking at uh, you know uh, buying an existing facility also see the 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 job work uh, uh, capacities are largely in similar products not in uh, some of the new new products that we are looking at Uh, which are not acid chloride so whatever job work capacity is within the within the associate companies is also in acid chlorides so mm-hmm. naturally when we are talking about products which are non acid chlorides we will have to look outside there is no a uh, question on that now looking mm-hmm. outside as i mentioned would mean two things one is that are we able to find a, a job worker outside with this kind of capabilities and this kind of permissions that is one Mm. and sec- or alternatively are we able to look at a small facility existing facility which we can take over uh, so so all these considerations are being uh, you know i mean all this being all these are being considered and uh, as i mentioned that based on how customers uh, come up with their plan in mm-hmm. terms of ramp up and all that we will make decision uh, you know accordingly for example if customer says that okay Uh, four or five customers says that look our ramp up plan is going to be very very slow then we may not immediately invest into anything we will just look for a for a job work facility no non associate job work facility okay and uh, if customer says no my ramp up plan is quick then naturally we will have to look for something where we are committed properly okay 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 and then one last question on you know products and the development apart from this new uh, products that we are planning to launch uh, uh, which we are expecting to scale up in fy second half of the fy 25 and you know fy 26 how many products are under development and how, what are the our plans of launching new products for uh, let's say uh, medium term over the next 2 to 3 years so product pipeline is quite uh, big Uh, again as i have explained uh, in past that we lo- we continue to look at new products new opportunities uh, in two ways one is that we do our own market research and based on that we look at the uh, potential products and second uh, customers interaction so m- most of the times we are our our customers are giving us multiple products that can you look at this products and uh, can you tell us so many a times we have to say no because they may not be within our uh, strategic intent or within our capabilities mm-hmm. but pipeline is quite uh, quite robust uh, the r&d team the new new business development team new product development team is is typically very very busy mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, yeah i mean that basically that's not an issue and some of the products that we are looking at can be also a very very large volume uh, Uh, potential but right now of course it is more at uh, more at understanding stage okay 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 okay, okay. thank you michel and you. sir uh, one one more request is for you know we are stock has been uh, has been you know under this wing for some time now and you know given hopefully the business will bounce back over the next one to two years one one request was on you know buy back if it's possible you know given our very good balance sheet now so sure. now see that this this is this is a good good point and we will definitely put it to the board but on one hand you are asking me about when you are going to invest in new facilities and on the other hand you are asking telling me to yeah. do buy back yeah. so we will have to see what is what is right for business right yeah so we will make the decision accordingly so sure. thank you sir thank you mr thank you the next question is from the line of pradeep rawat from yogya capital please go ahead yeah good evening sir and thank you for the opportunity uh, so good i have a couple of questions 
uh, yeah, good evening. So I have a couple of questions with respect. Uh, first, with respect to volume degrowth in FY24. Uh, so you said our volume declined uh, close to uh, 25% uh, in FY24. So would it be safe to assume that the overall demand fell by 25% or we lost market share or wallet share with our customer? No, see, uh, there has been loss of market share, but it is in to some extent, very small extent in domestic market. So far as and and as you know, our domestic market is quite uh, quite uh, small compared to export. Export market, there is no market share loss uh, in that sense. Overall requirement from the customers reduced because of their end product uh, demand being subdued. Of course, on a temporary basis. As I mentioned, structure of the business has not changed. Uh, the customers are also expecting revival of their demand. Uh, gradually as, uh, you know, either people uh, learn to live with this uncertain uh, situation, which, you know, props up and, and gives surprises time and again, or uh, some of these uncertainties go away. Uh, so so uh, they are very clear, the customers are very clear that uh, demand will gradually go back to the, the original level. The, the That is the easy part. The hard part is that... Uh, they are not able to, or nobody is able to very confidently say how much time it will take. So there are uh, discussions, there is indication that uh, maybe in another 12 months time, everything should uh, reach to the earlier levels and all that. So based on that, whatever interaction we are doing, that uh, H2 and the uh, next year, we'll see some, uh, some, uh, some gradual uh, uh, increase or gradual growth reversal of the growth that we have seen yeah and my second question is regarding our uh, investment in silox india private limited so uh, i just wanted to know what is the purpose of this investment and are we looking to disinvest this investment or is it something like useful to our business no see the point is that uh, transpec sold uh, its uh, sulfoxinescent business way back in 2000 to a, an European group called Prion Group and Silox is uh, their organizational name. Uh, at that time when we sold off that division we maintained a small percentage of shareholding as part of the transfer agreement. So that shareholding has grown uh, over so many years to a certain value. Now, when I say value, this is not market value because this is illiquid stock. This is not listed and this is privately, in that sense, privately held company. Uh, so, so it is not easy to end cash uh, because uh, even if we want to end cash uh, whatever value that we can fetch, uh, the, the, the Silox or the company or the promoters of Silox or the board of Silox may not agree to uh, part ways with such a large amount of cash. So this is kind of illiquid uh, illiquid uh, um, uh, investment at this point in time. Uh, if you ask me, I would also like to encash uh, this investment, but it's not that simple or it's not that easy. Uh, on, on the other hand, we generally get good dividends. Over so many years, we have been getting very, very good dividends coming out of uh, uh, this investment. Yeah, that, that's good to hear. And uh, my last question is regarding our, uh, you said our high margin products are 36% of the total revenue, right? Uh, would be, would be. When, okay. Once once we we add this, some of this high value or high, high, high price and high margin products, once we start adding uh, that kind of, uh, that kind of, uh, that is the target that we have about 30-35% of the volume would be coming from those, those products. Okay, so what is the current ratio of total revenue for these products? Almost none, almost none, because these are all uh, all known asset right products. So as I mentioned, they are under validation with customers. Uh, uh, and what is the margin profile of these products as compared to our current product? This can be almost... Uh, 
you can say 20, 15 to 20 percent higher than uh, what we are earning today. In terms of the, in terms of the uh, EBITDA margin, you can say for this product especially about whatever revenue that we talk about, 30 percent, 35 percent revenue that we may fetch, that would give much higher EBITDA. Uh, then what we are, uh, our EBITDA, as you know, generally is between 16 to 20 percent. This time, I think it's about 17.8 percent uh, for the entire, uh, the whole, whole, whole business. Uh, once we are able to commercialize these products, 30, 35 uh, uh, percent of our volume should be probably uh, EBITDA of uh, 18 uh, into 20, so about 20, 22, 23. Uh, percent EBITDA uh, should be there. Okay, and my uh, and my last question is regarding uh, the dye market. So, uh, can you like give a comment on how the dye market is performing? How is the cons customer engagement with dye uh, dye players? Actually, we have uh, very very small exposure, very small exposure now in uh, dyes and pigments market because. Our main product that we used to sell was thionyl chloride, and now we are not selling it. We are selling, we are consuming entire thionyl chloride production uh, captively. But whatever my understanding is about dye market is that uh, it's 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 still not uh, recovering. I mean, it's it's still in trouble. Okay, okay, fair enough. Thank you, thank you for answering all the questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Darmawat from Aurum Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for organizing this call also. I just wanted to understand uh, what is the capacity utilization uh, for the current year that is financial year 24 and what, what is the capacity utilization we are expecting for financial year 25? 68% has been uh, 24 and about 78, 79% we are expecting for 25. Okay. And what is the peak revenue at current prices we can expect um, and peak revenue at medi median prices? Median prices are difficult to say, but but if we are if we are able to utilize uh, everything well and uh, at a, whatever is the normal price that uh, we can fetch, we can we can reach around 900 920 crores with uh, 78 79 percent utilization no 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 as i said if we we are able to utilize everything fully okay full utilization okay yeah okay. yeah yeah and uh, do you see any revival in end user industries uh, you know, where our products are getting consumed yeah, so uh, see, there are three three major segments that we need to look at when we talk about this. Uh, one is polymers, uh, which uh, which is of course uh, polymers are in two forms. One is in textile and clothing form, or second is in uh, formed, so kind of uh, molded form and all that. And third is of course thread and everything. But all these polymers, the supply that we do is going to very high-end uh, polymers. Uh, they are called aramid fibers. And uh, the market for that or the demand for that is right now a little bit subdued, but uh, it is going to be uh, consistently growing. For example, as we speak, some of the companies in uh, in um, in uh, in uh, uh, eastern market, far east market like Korea and Japan, they are expanding their capacity for aramid uh, aramid fibers. Uh, some are in fact uh, almost doubling their capacity. Okay. Uh, so so aramid aramid business is going to gradually consist. So as we understand today. Uh, so far, they have not been. I mean, nobody has been able to really find uh, a significantly uh, competitive material. Uh, and 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 aramid business is also restricted within a few companies globally. When I say aramid, high end aramid, there are also some low end uh, aramid products where some Chinese companies are uh, are active, but uh, most of our products go into high end. Uh, so. 
growth is there growth is not going to be uh, kind of exponential or very fast but uh, potential is there i mean the growth growth is going to be continuous like that okay and um, i see that you know house fix assets increased by almost 25% in last two years so what is it for can you provide some details over there yes see basically one of the major thing that you are seeing in uh, in assets is right of use assets so because of the accounting requirements uh Uh, in 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 days requirements whatever assets that we we have on lease also need to be put inside the 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 gross block or whatever the asset block as right of use assets so right of use assets for example has grown um, almost by uh, how many crores uh, Seventy crores, right? Seventy crores. Uh, now, when I say seventy crores, it is not actually the asset increase. It is purely the way accounting is done. So, what they do is that they take five years of uh, the lease asset. We have, as you might be knowing, we have many ISO things which are on lease. So, that lease asset, they do the five-year calculation of the lease rent. and then they do some calculation i mean some apply something some some formulas and then they come to a number which is basically considered as value of the asset and that is put in that secondly there is also a small increase uh, sorry there is also one another increase in property plan and equipment which is about 32 crores which is largely due to uh, 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 final chloride we we had built one uh, one additional stream uh, then capacity modification enhancement this good amount of expenditure on energy conservation as i mentioned we just uh, replace one plant so some part of that is accounted in that uh, there has been uh, uh, this uh, uh, some of the expenditure on new boiler for example like that i got it i got it uh my two two more questions so one is uh, uh, you already answered that partially we have uh, you know investments of around 300 crores uh, uh i wanted to know about the buyback plan so you mentioned something about that uh, i also wanted to know where uh, this fund is currently parked uh where, where it is invested so if you can throw some light on that no there is no parking of fund in that sense see when we invested when i say invested we just uh, held some shares in that company still off okay. and the value of our uh, uh face value of our investment is very very small it is just uh, about 3 crore mm-hmm. okay and valuation as per the balance sheet of that company is 309 crores okay. now as i mentioned that is just valuation uh, that, that this is not money that we have invested what we had invested was only 3 crores okay. and 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 uh, the valuation is done based based on uh, in days requirement so uh, it's, it's 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 kind of notional value as i mentioned earlier also i would love if if i am able to encash that uh, that investment you know oh that looks you know slightly challenging task yes yes uh, okay so my final uh, request rather is uh, uh, and since we have only this opportunity to talk to you uh, we would like to visit the plant uh, because it will give us great opportunity to learn and uh, we have suggested this to ir also so if you can uh, help us doing that it will certainly be of help we will travel from our city because we are we will be coming from pune and we are ready to do that so if you can uh, you know plan something on that like it will help all of us
Yeah, so 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 at, at Transpec we have always uh, encouraged and, and invited shareholders to visit us. Uh, in past, I think about um, two three groups of uh, uh, shareholders in in batches of about ten twelve ten twelve they had visited. Uh, we would be happy to welcome you or anybody on the call of the call. Uh, based on a proper um, schedule and proper arrangement uh, in consultation with our uh, uh, investor uh, relations advisors. Uh, okay. Please connect with them and we will organize. No problem. Wonderful. I'll do that. I'll connect with you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Darshil Javeri from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for taking my question. Hope I'm audible. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. So, sir, this is my first question. I really wanted to know, sir, Q3 and Q4 revenues are very similar, but our margins are very different. So, what was the major driving factor for that, sir? And would we see, so in FY25, will the margins be a bit subdued? So, how would it be, sir? So basically, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of uh, my uh, speech, that when you look at Transfix uh, financial performance, you must uh, or you should look at uh, annual performance because quarter to quarter uh, there can be variations. Now, what? Why does this variation? So I'll just explain that. Uh, we have diverse uh, range of products. So we have products which are. Uh, as I mentioned, going into polymers, going into pharmaceuticals, going into, and then there are different customers, different regions. So just to give you an example that uh, region A, same product going to region A and same product going to region B, there can be price difference, there can be margin difference based on that price. Uh, secondly, in some cases, uh, you know, we may have consistent margin because of some uh, uh, agreements or some long-term purchase order that we may have from the customer. Now, in a particular quarter where our, you see our margins to be higher, uh, we may have demand or we may have orders for those products where the margins are higher or margins are consistent. In the next quarter, you may see uh, lower margin because the, the product or the demand that we have or the supplies that we make may not be as uh, good margins as we had made in the earlier quarter. So, so on an average, if you look at last four or five years uh, annual numbers, you will always find that we have remained around uh, 17, 18, 19, 20 percent EBITDA. So that way margins are quite consistent. Quarter to quarter you will definitely see variation. Oh, okay, okay, fair enough, sir. That uh, helps you a lot, sir. And so, just like from what we, you know, replied in to the earlier participants, we see a some kind of demand betterment from H2. So, is it fair to assume that H1 would be similar to H1 FI24? And like, if you could just give some small guidance in terms of our revenue and the beta in terms of FI25, it would be it would be little better than H1 last okay. year okay and uh, so sir on overall can we do a double digit growth in this year sir in double uh, revenue just one moment huh? yeah thank you just one moment huh? yes sir Maybe very close to double digit. Oh, okay, okay, fair enough, sir. And so, just last question, sir. So, what, as like you know, analysts, we would not be understanding the industry very well. But what could you say as would be a turning point that you know, okay, okay, growth has started coming in, orders have started coming in. You know, what could you know? How would you be able to define that 
for our industry our companies so that you know okay now things look like what they were looking in you know fy 23 in, in terms of overall chemical industry we are talking about yeah so our overall chemical industry like you know is speaking about this talking and maybe a bit about our company also you know like something that you know you think is a tipping point for See, it's it's very interesting i mean i am sure you might be invested in other chemical companies also and you might be hearing the same thing from there it's like you know uh, we we get a sense that okay things are going to improve now and this talking has happened and this and that and then still uh, some challenges keep on coming but what i feel is that uh, maybe in another one one and a half years time we should be seeing uh, 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 you know kind of back to glory days uh, in chemical industry this is my feeling now there it will also depend on how government policies and everything else is also uh, there you know how how how, how because uh, in my view we are we are not we have not been able to capture china plus one uh, opportunities as as much as we should have captured oh okay fair enough sir that's it from my side all the best sir thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Freedom's Capital Wealth. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Good evening, Bimal Bhai. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Bimal Bhai, a uh, couple of questions. First, uh, you mentioned uh, one clarification. You mentioned that 30-35 percent of the revenue coming from these new products, which are high-margin products. you mentioned the margins will be 22% so you are talking about uh, margins for the overall company to go from 16 to 22 22 to 22 range or 22% is the margin for that 35% product basket so this 30 35% can give 22 to 23% uh, ebitda okay fair enough and so this 30 uh, 35% high value products which you are talking about so does it include this new asset chloride which we are uh, starting this year or, or have started say in last six eight months where you mentioned that no, no, top rank no, is no, the chloride products so you are talking about non asset chloride let's assume ki you mentioned ki our polymer business can be around 800 to 900 crores and another 100 crores from this new asset chloride So we are talking no, no, about just, just, just one moment. Not ah. polymer business. Our total business can be about 800 to 900 crores, which includes pharma, polymer, everything, not mm-hmm. just polymer. Okay, got it. So that means including this m- new acid chloride product, you are talking about 800 to 900. Yes. But then this doesn't include this non-acid high-margin products, right? Yes. yes. So when you say 30-35 percent contribution can be from there. Even if I take say 900 as the existing company turnover, so are we talking about somewhere 300 crores of revenues from these new products? If you take if you take 900 as the base, yes. But if you take current base of about 600, 700 crores, then it's about 200 crores. I mean, what time frame can we do this 200 crores? We we, we we basically we need to understand the overall demand visibility, but potential. potential of this this products is quite quite good uh, it can go to 200 crores it can go to 250 crores when you put all these products together so sure. and i believe these are the new products where mr singh has been working on these products probably it includes one of the pharma product also and there are uh, there are products for pharma there are products for uh, again for polymers there are products for some other applications also including the combination chemistry yes 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 sure. mr singh mr singh is very actively working on some of this product yes yeah i know we have met during the agm so he seems to be quite update on this products but also we were waiting for some uh, approvals uh, regulatory approvals for this products so you mentioned uh, somewhere in one of the participant uh, replies that the validation batches are being done Yes. So typically, when do we expect to launch these products? Very, very, From very, diffi- very difficult to say. Uh, you know, or, I mean, uh, 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 like you know, maybe three months, six months, eight months. It's very difficult to say like that because, as I mentioned earlier, customer will do not only validation; customer will also do performance trial. Uh-huh. Then first performance trial, then second performance trial, then commercial performance trial. So. 
so it's it's a process and uh, sometimes these products are priority at customers and sometimes they are not it may be very big priority for us but it may not be as big priority for customers so this is little little tricky to you know uh, forecast but over next as i mentioned over next two two and a half years we should be able to commercialize most of these products so are we waiting for customer uh, uh, approvals or also we are waiting for regulatory approvals as far as this products are concerned both 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 and sir uh, assuming ki suppose the customer approvals coming say next 8 to 12 months say 12 months hmm. so then do you feel somewhere is it possible that the customer approvals come but somewhere we lack the capacities to produce this products maybe because the regular approval is not coming in you are not getting that company which you would like to ideally buy and you know so that we produce those products at the some job working company or a new company to be acquired something Largely like that actually that possibility is is very very remote uh, because we already have uh, gathered some understanding and information on what what needs to be done uh-huh. uh, so 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 we are working on some of those uh, those uh, possibilities Mm. so that 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 possibility is very remote that we may have product with we may not have permission okay so, so some there is at the back of your mind there is some preparation done in case the approval comes yes. sooner yes. so as i mentioned right? you know for example we can do job work somewhere like that so the so 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 there are there are there are options that we we have considered and we are working on some of those options uh but uh, but uh, we we will we will actually commit to some of these things once we have some clarity on the on the approval process customer approval is the product approval not the facility approval no no product approval sure so one last question and i know we have been talking about this for a long time um sir we had planned a 120 crore capex in vizac somewhere before covid 6 months prior to covid Mm-hmm. and we were putting up a new plant a new premise we had thought about in fact right. when we used to meet you during 2017 18 19 agms yes. that time we had mentioned that it is really difficult to get approvals in gujarat so we will choose some other state and then you went ahead and uh, took up this land in vizac and then of course covid struck and our polymer business had a recent downfall so i do understand say for two years post covid uh, matlab when covid started and said two three years we thought hey, let's put this behind or let's put it at the back burner but is there some structural change in the business because of which now you are not ready to commit a large capex which is rest about 100 120 crores or maybe 200 crores and our balance sheet is quite strong enough to handle that kind of capex so there is some kind of structural change maybe from product side or from customer side matlab i'm just trying to understand ki what has changed uh in uh from after you bought that land of 120 crores uh, you were doing a capex of 120 crores in vizac and then you cancelled it and till today we are not trying to commit any green fee capex so basically that was not even 120 crores it was little more but uh, but uh, on that was on the back of interactions with certain customers who were keen to work with us in uh, some of the some of the products that they were manufacturing and they wanted us to manufacture now uh, because of the covid situation uh, their plants overall i mean th- this was also based on their growth plans so their growth plans they also kind of halted and uh, whatever business we had at that time or whatever business we have at this point in time as i mentioned there is no structural change what has changed is that whatever their ideas or ambitions or their forecasts or their uh, their growth uh, propositions that were there those could not continue due to this uh, covid and then this war and other situations and therefore naturally we aligned with our customers uh, the propositions that okay let us wait until the, the same similar situation arises and at that time we will commit ourselves and uh, if you if you re- look if you re- really look at you know uh, the 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 post uh, that decision which is to withdraw from that investment whatever has happened 
and you are seeing many chemical companies have gotten into significant trouble because of large investment and idle capacities i think it was a very prudent decision to 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 uh, not to not to commit to that uh, as you rightly mentioned balance sheet is very strong and we hope we may have similar opportunities coming from customers uh, soon then we will definitely go for this kind of uh, investments again thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint that was the last question i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments thank you thank you everyone for joining us today on this earnings call we appreciate your interest and time uh, in the company if you have any further queries please contact sta our investment relations advisors thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank you. On behalf of Transpac Industry Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.